If I had to start learning Blender today, but had all my knowledge that I've gathered over the years, here's what I would suggest you do in order to maximize the efficiency and minimize the time required to master Blender without getting frustrated or getting stuck. Let's go. First of all, you need to think what you want to do and learn the basics. Learn the foundations of Blender. That is really important. There are a lot of people out there who don't really know what they want to do. They don't know their niche yet. And they are trying to learn different things and waste their time. It is important to try things out to find your niche. But once you find what you really want to do, I suggest you stick to it. That is really vital. So in terms of Blender, this could be sculpting, animation, rigging. This could be video video editing, although I don't really know why anyone would choose Blender for video editing, but you know, you could do that. Or it could be hard surface modeling, which is what we do. So let's say that you're really into hard surface modeling and that's what you want to do. In this case, I would really focus on the basics and try to find some structured content that's going to help you bypass all the trauma that fragmented YouTube videos will do to you. A structured course is very important at the beginning because you're going to be running into obstacles every single second because you don't know anything. You need the support and help to guide you through the basics. Remember that unlearning bad habits it's far more difficult than learning from scratch so in order not to waste your time you want to learn the correct way from the beginning now we have our free course which is called jumpstart hard surface in blender it was created for beginners and in just a few hours you can learn the foundations of hard surface modeling this course will tell you exactly what you need what you don't need to learn this way you're not going to get overwhelmed and it's going to help you jumpstart the learning curve in blender now another thing that's really important is you need to learn the shortcuts not gonna lie it's going to take some time but it is worth it making a list of them and learning that way isn't the best idea though but when you do something in blender or you follow a tutorial make notes of these shortcuts and use them the best way to memorize them is by repeating these tasks or these operations in blender when you're doing it on your own for example shift a is going to open an add menu which allows you to add objects in blender so you don't have to go up to the top menu to access it it just saves you a lot of time because this menu will open wherever your mouse cursor is located there are a lot of shortcuts like these in blender and eventually it's gonna become a muscle memory so pay attention to these shortcuts because shortcuts are extremely powerful like I said before you don't really need to know all of them you just need to know the ones that are essential to your workflow so again, find your niche, focus on one thing, mastering one thing is how you're going to improve much quicker rather than jumping from one thing to another, trying to learn everything. Next tip is add-ons. You will find people online advocating vanilla blender. Now don't listen to these map as it's fucking lost in Narnia, okay? You should learn add-ons from day one. I started blender with five add-ons. It was machine tools, hard ops, box cutter, mesh machine, and kid ops. I didn't even know how to move the damn cube but i had all these add-ons installed it's true that you need to learn what these add-ons are replacing so for example if machine tools replaces shift s menu or another menu you need to know how to do it in vanilla blender because when the add-on doesn't work or you got some conflict or you may be working on a blender that doesn't have the add-on installed you need to know how to perform these operations in blender vanilla but add-ons are going to save you thousands of hours whether it's paid add-ons or free add-ons it doesn't matter what add-on it is as long as you need it it's like a tool now if you're a carpenter you need a hammer and a saw to work you're not gonna be hammering nails with your hand right so these are essential tools and they're going not only to speed up your workflow but going to make your way more efficient and actually allow you to do things that maybe are not even possible with vanilla blender a good example here would be hard ops and mesh machine an add-on can take complex operations and reduce them to just one click of a button all of our courses promote add-on workflow because that's how smart people work and that's also how you're going to be expected to work in a professional
professional environment. When you're going to be working in a studio or even as a freelancer, time is the essence because the faster you are, the more efficient you're going to be and the more money you'll make. In professional environment, people don't care how you get shit done as long as it's what they wanted and it was done quickly. So it's up to you to develop an efficient workflow and add-ons will be a vital part of it. My next tip would be that you should run multiple versions of Blender on your machine, be it PC or Mac. Some people don't know that you can have installed or run multiple versions of Blender on your machine. Running multiple versions of Blender is really important because it will make you more flexible and also will allow you for uninterrupted workflow. Let me explain this. Oftentimes, Blender add-ons are going to be conflicting with ever-changing Blender code. Now, Blender evolves quickly and its Python code is often updated. So if there is any conflict or crashes, you will get frustrated. A simple solution here is to have a working version of Blender, which in my case right now is Blender 3.6 and 4.0. Then on top of this, you can run experimental versions like Alpha or Beta. Some of these new versions may have tools you will need for a specific task, like recently introduced shadow and light linking. So if something doesn't work in one version of Blender, I can always move my stuff immediately to another version of Blender that I know is stable. So let's say I have Blender 3.6 with all my add-ons installed and I know this Blender is stellar, never crashes. This will be my working Blender for a daily use. So when new Blender version comes out and I'm having issues, I can always go back to my stable version instantly. In addition, you can copy objects or models from you know one Blender window to another by simply pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl V and you're done. This is really useful when you're working on some project Projects and for example you made a mistake and saved something you shouldn't be saving or you want to recover a previous element of your model you can open it in a different Blender version and copy it over. So do not nuke your old and stable Blender versions until they become outdated. And the last piece of advice I give you is probably the most important one. I would definitely join a group or a program that offers help and support. In our case, you can join our public Blender Bros Discord server. We have over 6,000 people there and you can ask questions whenever you get stuck and I'm sure you get some help. Now, if you Serious about learning, you could bring in a notch higher and join our Academy 2.0 program where together with Josh we not only personally answer questions but we also hold weekly Q&A sessions with our members and answer any questions they're struggling with, whether it's rendering, modeling, detailing, whatever it is, we can help. Now, in addition, there are a lot of like-minded people in that program from all walks of life and they have knowledge that could push you up. We have engineers architects, designers, game devs, even concept designers from NASA. So it's a very good place to be in terms of growth because you're not only surrounded by people who think in terms of self-improvement but also are very helpful. Having the support of a group of like-minded people and having a place where you can actually ask a question and get an instant answer is going not only to save you a ton of time but also remove all frustrations from watching fragmented YouTube content or trying to figure it out all by yourself. This is how people give up, okay? They get frustrated because they run into obstacles and cannot fix it. And it's a problem. So having a group that's going to help you overcome these issues in seconds is invaluable. It's like learning a language and having a teacher sitting next to you, being able to guide you and correct you and answer any questions instantly. Think how much faster you'd be learning and progressing. So there you go. These would be my tips for any new Blender user. I guarantee you that if you follow these tips, you will be improving very quickly and more importantly, learning will be fun and easy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.